Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for being here today. As always, if you are interested in tarot cards, tarot readings, true crime cases, unsolved crime cases, and the occasional candle making video, please consider subscribing. And for those of you who come back every week, I truly appreciate it and I always look forward to seeing and reading your comments every week. So I really thank you for that and your continued support. So before I get started with today's reading, I just wanted to actually show some gratitude to those of you who come back every week and comment and make suggestions and help interpret and make associations with the tarot cards. I really want to do something for you guys and I want to do a free giveaway, a drawing. And so what I'm going to do is I think I'll record it. I'm literally going to go old school and I think everybody who comments on this particular video, I'm going to literally just write everybody's name down and randomly pick a winner and the winner is actually going to receive a tarot candle. So my tarot candles are these large 14 ounce, I don't know if you can see them, 14 ounce candles. It's actually a 16 ounce jar, but I sell them as 14 ounces. And they do have, I have major arcana labels. I think I have, it would be your choice as far as what label you would like on your candle. I think I have every major arcana with the exception of the sun. That has been a really popular one. And I think I sold my last sun today. So I don't have the sun card, but I have every other card available. It would be your choice. I make sure that I don't put the labels on before I sell a candle because I let people choose what they have. And the person today happened to pick the last sun. So these are actually, and this is one without a label. So these are Palo Santo cleansing candles and it has rose quartz crystals inside of it. Actually, I believe it's Palo Santo and patchouli, if I'm not mistaken. I had to, when I reordered, they didn't have the Palo Santo plain, so I had to get Palo Santo and patchouli. So this is the scent, and I think I'm going to throw in a wax melt of your choice. So you would be getting the 14-ounce tarot candle, as well as a wax melt of your choice. You can just go on to my Etsy shop and look and see what fragrances I have, because I have probably about 20 different scents and you can just choose the wax melt that you want to go with the candle and you can just let me know what major arcana you want and then you can send me an email with your address and I can ship it out to you so again I just wanted to thank you guys because I really do appreciate your support so having said all that um, for today's case this has been a requested case Several people have requested this case, and you can tell by the title that it is Susan Cox Powell. And it just so happened, coincidentally, that I had two cases back to back within the same week where the husbands were monsters. I didn't plan for that last week, or not last week, but a couple of days, I uploaded a video, a tarot reading on Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger. And so tonight it's going to be Susan Powell and Josh Powell. But I don't want to get too much into the background. If you're not familiar with this case, I would really recommend that you go and possibly watch what happened in this case and then maybe come back and, and watch the tarot reading. There's going to be a few things that I'm going to focus on, but I... I I'm going to outline those couple of things, but I'm not going to get really too much into the background and then we'll get right into the uh, tarot reading. So a couple of points of concern. The first being the night that led up to the initial camping trip to Simpson Springs, which was a two hour drive from Susan and Josh's home. Now, we know Josh tried to explain this impromptu trip by saying he did random things like this with his boys all the time. Keep in mind, this is Utah in the middle of winter with freezing temperatures and the timing of the trip being at midnight simply just doesn't make any sense. Who leaves for a camping trip in the freezing cold at midnight? So let's back up to the previous night. Susan's Powell, Susan Powell's father believes Josh poisoned his daughter with pancakes that he uncharacteristically made the night before. 
Josh was not the type to cook dinner for his wife and boys, so this was very unusual. Not only that, he prepared each pancake individually and also cleaned up afterwards. So, like I said, the night before this impromptu camping trip, it was very unusual. Josh is making dinner, never makes dinner for his wife or for his kids. And not only that, he's cooking these pancakes individually. So I want to ask, did he put something in Susan's pancakes? Did he put something in there to possibly knock her out or make her sick or put her to sleep is what I want to know. Okay. So going back to the following morning, Susan and Josh failed to show up for work. The boys did not show up to daycare and the family could not get a hold of anyone. Fearing that carbon monoxide could be the reasoning behind this, Susan's family contacted the police and eventually a window was broken and the home was entered and searched, but no one was there. There were, however, two box fans in the living room drying a spot on the carpet that looked as if it had just been cleaned. Josh eventually makes it back home. I'm assuming he's shocked to find all these people in and around his house and claims he took the boys on a camping trip overnight for s'mores and that Susan had stayed home because she was sleeping. He explains that he got the days confused and thought it was Sunday and that is why he failed to show up for work or to call in. Josh is eventually questioned and is a person of interest but does not give any helpful information or seem too concerned about his missing wife. Now, the oldest son Charlie was also questioned and his interview can be seen on YouTube. But Charlie says mommy was in fact in the van when they went camping. Charlie also mentions crystals and a beach. So let's keep those, those couple of things in mind as we are reading tonight, crystals and a beach. Later on, Susan's dad, Chuck Cox said that, quote, Braden had drawn a picture the summer after his mother's disappearance showing three people in the van and reportedly said, mommy is in the trunk. Chuck Cox believed that the children would have remembered more had they been able to undergo hypnosis. So now let's bump up or go ahead two days after Susan initially went missing. So this is after the, Josh had been interviewed for the first time. Josh then rents a car and this car was later found to have had 803 miles put on it by him. Josh had also gone off the grid for 24 hours and police had no idea where he traveled to as there was no GPS data on the rental car. This means that Josh drove at least 400 miles one way, which creates a huge area to search because police have no clue even the direction in which he went. Josh continued to be a person of interest, but never a suspect, which is very odd in my opinion. He eventually lawyered up and was not cooperative with the investigators. Police did search the Simpson Springs campsite, but fresh snow in a vast area made it very difficult. We all know the horrific ending to this story, as well as the troubled childhood that Josh came from, including chasing his mother with a butcher knife when he was a child because she asked him to do the dishes. Josh's father, Stephen, was also apparently obsessed with Susan and eventually arrested for CP found on his computer later on. Videos can be found of Stephen recording Susan and are very creepy and show just a slight bit of the nightmare that Susan was living in. So what I want to focus on tonight is the leading up to the camping trip, the pancakes, the cleaned carpet, the campsite, the 400 mile trip, where I personally believe that is when Josh went back to gather Susan's remains and move them someplace else. And I also want to see if Steven, which is Josh's dad, and Michael, which is Josh's brother, had anything to do with this or if they helped Josh in any way whatsoever. Another thing is we need to keep an eye on all the geography showing up in the cards tonight. So uh, again, you know, this is a pretty dysfunctional family on Josh's side. His dad was, you know, he chased his mother around with a butcher knife because she asked him to clean the dishes. His dad was obviously not right in the head. Um, you know, and I don't think that he really got along with his dad too much. It wasn't until I think after Susan's disappearance that he 
became closer to his dad for some reason. So that makes me wonder if possibly the dad, Stephen, was not assisting him or helping him in some way, shape, or form. So let's go ahead and keep all of those things in mind. I am going to start with the low Scarabio tarot deck tonight. And I first want to... I first want to go into the night leading up to this impromptu camping trip, which is obviously a lie. No one is going to get up or take their two boys or two young children in the middle of the winter out in the Utah desert area to go camping for s'mores. If you wanted s'mores that bad, you could do s'mores in your backyard or just not do s'mores and do s'mores in your kitchen. I've done that before so it, it just seems like such a outrageous lie and I, I honestly can't believe that he went two years we know the ending of course if you're familiar with this case but I can't believe in the two years prior to that ending that there wasn't an arrest so I don't know hopefully justice will well justice on this side I don't think is going to happen but hopefully things are going the way they're supposed to in the spirit world so I personally believe that Susan is with her boys and Josh and his brother Michael and his father Stephen are also where they're supposed to be we'll just say that so I want to know what happened the night before this camping trip and was there something in those pancakes that Susan ate? Was there something in the pancakes that Susan ate? Actually, I'm going to do just a quick yes or no. Okay. So this fell out. We'll get to that one in a minute, which is the Knight of Pentacles. Let me see if you can see this. So we've got the Knight of Pentacles, but for my yes question, as far as was something in the pancakes, I drew the Three of Cups. That is definitely a yes card to me. And again, it's interesting because we have three women. We have three women in a huge bowl and they're smashing grapes with their feet. So you, you literally have three people smashing something in a bowl. And that just to me screams him smashing something and putting it in a bowl with possibly pancake mix. So I definitely do think that this is crazy that this is coming out because I do feel like he did in fact put something in those pancakes. This is not a man who made dinner. Susan's dad said that this is not a man who made dinner for his, his wife and kids. He didn't clean, he didn't do anything, but that night he was. So very interesting that that came up. And then the Knight of Pentacles. So this here, the one thing that I get from this particular card is that this particular knight is not on a horse. Now horses or now knights are usually the fastest cards in the deck, especially the Knight of Swords. It's speed, it's action. But this one here, I get a different feeling. I get a different feeling altogether. Because he's riding a cow, which is odd, I get, and honestly, with the Knight of Pentacles, I always get a, a clumsy kind of feel because of the way the knight is usually dressed in the Knight of Pentacles. He's got kind of that, you know, goofy outfit that he's wearing. It looks like it's five sizes too big for him. He's decked out from head to toe in armor, and he's riding on a horse, and it looks like the horse is out of control. And so it's kind of become my clumsy card. I don't so much get clumsiness from this one, but I do get not dressed appropriately and riding on an animal that you don't typically ride on. And according or uh, compared to a horse, a cow would be slow. So there's something about not being prepared. I feel like someone here is not being prepared. They're not dressed properly and things aren't going as fast as one would hope. So it kind of makes me wonder if he gave her something and perhaps it did not kick in as fast as he expected it to kick in. And possibly was not prepared for the repercussions of that because this person is obviously underdressed. 
And that's a possibility as well, because I, I do believe that that night when they went to that quote unquote Simpson campsite, that Susan was in fact in that car. I believe that Susan was in the trunk of the minivan. I, I think that he did something to her prior prior to um, leaving the house that night and did in fact, did in fact take her someplace that night and perhaps we've got a blanket here. You know, I, I hate being that graphic, but it makes me wonder if maybe a blanket wasn't used. Let me see if I can find a better place to put these. It makes me wonder if possibly a blanket wasn't used to cover her up and, and put her in the back of the van. So let's continue on. I'm kind of curious. I don't know if I'm going to get a cause of death per se, but I'm kind of curious to see if a weapon, if we could find out about a weapon. Is there a weapon? Now, I will say that we know that Josh had many tools. We know that Susan made some videos showing all of his tools and toys, like a grown child. He had a ton of stuff, a ton of expensive stuff. And, I, you know, just ugh. the videos are really hard to watch because there's one video I watched where Susan's going around the house and she's I think a lot of us have probably seen that one where she's documenting all of their possessions in the home and Josh's collection of tools and car parts and just all these odds and end things, computer things, software. He had a ton of stuff and most of it was purchased either by Susan or on Susan's credit. But Susan apparently really liked Mary Kay products especially the makeup and she makes a comment in one of the videos I watched about how Josh said it was too expensive and so he would cut her off he wouldn't allow her to buy the Mary Kay because it was too costly and that just makes you really oh it just disgusted me because here's this man who will spend three thousand dollars on computer software with his wife's credit and not allow his wife, who's the one that's working and supporting the family, to buy her Mary Kay makeup. So that is the kind of guy that we're, we're dealing with here. So my point with that little sidetrack story was the tools. He had a lot of tools. And I believe that there was something that was found that was melted down. And I believe that a lot of people are speculating that that was actually a drill. And I want to ask, yes or no, was that used as the weapon? Oh, okay, wow. So, yeah, I mean, we, we know that this guy is pretty dark. Pretty dark. You know, I, I there's just no question about it. When the devil comes up, there's really no need to go into explaining that. And, you know, I'm looking at this particular devil card here and the husband, the man, we've got the wife and, and the husband, you're assuming, he's got a drink and it looks like he's handing it over to her. And again, that makes me feel like he did in fact try to give something to his wife with ill intentions. So I, I definitely do feel like he did, he did give her something in those pancakes. So as far as the tools are concerned, I think it's definitely a possibility that something like that was used um, and, and, and possibly other things as well. What about the carpet? Was the carpet, what was going on with the carpet, with the wet carpet? What happened by the carpet? So, I definitely do think that this is coming up to represent Josh. I think he is the one. I don't know if, I'm not sure, and you guys can put it in the comment section. I don't know if he said that that was something that Susan cleaned up or that had happened the previous day. 
but this is definitely to me indicating that he was the one ultimately responsible for that carpet being destroyed or whatever happened. So this here, the water represents whatever was on the carpet. The carpet was wet. This is him. He is ultimately responsible for the mess on the carpet. So if he did try to say that it was Susan who did clean the carpet, to me that's absolutely incorrect. He was the one who is in charge of messing up that carpet and cleaning the carpet. So I want to know if Susan was injured at the home before leaving on this trip. Was Susan injured at the home? The wheel. So it, it, things can go either way. I, I would say she was injured but not passed away. That, that's how I would read that card for that question. So it, definitely not herself, but not okay either. Okay, so was Susan in the car or was Susan in the minivan when Josh took the boys up to this campsite? Was Susan in the minivan? Yeah, they were together. They were together. He was with his wife when they went on this quote-unquote trip. I, I guess I'll just refer to it as the camping trip, but, you know, we all know that that's not what it was, but... That's why I feel strange saying camping trip, but I do feel like this indicates that he was in fact with his wife in that van on that camping trip. They were together. Wow. So this camping trip, this Simpson Springs was about a two hour drive from Josh and Susan's home. I wanna see if I can pull a couple of cards just to see if we can get kind of an idea of the landscaping and the geography of that location. Now let's look at the timeline. We know that he left about midnight, I guess. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not, but let's say he left at midnight. That means that he would have arrived at the location at about 2 a.m. And I can't remember what time he came back home. I don't know if it was seven, I don't know if it was nine, but let's say, it, let's say it was 9, which means he had to leave his location at 7 in order to make it back home at 9. So that gives him a good 5 hours out there doing whatever he did for 5 hours. Before I go into the next question I just said, I want to ask if the boys were awake or if they were sleeping because remember this is in the middle of the night and these boys are really, really young. And I would assume that in a 2 hour drive they would have fallen asleep. So I do want to quickly ask if Charlie and Brayden were sleeping in the car when all of this horror was going on around them. So was Charlie and Brayden awake or sleeping? Hmm. Interesting. This is trust. This is a trust card. This is comfort. This is strength. And it kind of makes me feel that, kind of makes me feel like it's possible that Susan may have been injured and may not have been herself, but I feel like Susan was potentially alive. To me, this is Susan, and we've got, look at that, we've got two kids in the background. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but we've got like two children in the back by that tree. So we've got a, a mother, I'm looking at this as a mother, I'm looking at this as Susan and her two children, her two boys in the background. And then you've got this fierce monster, so to speak, and I almost kind of feel like this lion is Josh, to be honest with you. And I kind of feel like like I said, she may have been injured and she may not have been 100% coherent because Lord knows what he put in her pancakes that, that evening. But I wonder if this was her trying to finesse him a little bit so that she could survive this evening. Trying to earn his trust, trying to convince him not to do whatever it is that he was planning on doing. 
but I don't think it happened in front of the boys. I think the boys were someplace else. I kind of have a feeling that he left the boys in the van and possibly him and Susan, although she may have been not doing very well, went off and I think it's possible that she was literally desperately trying to convince him not to do what she probably knew he was going to do. God, I just can't even imagine. All right, so what else happened after that? After she tried to convince him of something, what, what happened after that? Hmm, okay, so let's pull a few here. Very interesting. Wow. So what happened after that? And we pull the death card. So that tells me, yeah, I, I really, honestly, that's how I feel. I, I really feel like, I feel like she was injured. I feel like she was literally injured at the home, but not, not passed away. I think that she was definitely in that van going out to this campsite. I think the boys were probably sleeping. Kids fall asleep in a car with the heat on and, and driving. So I don't think the kids were really aware of what was going on at that point. They probably at one point woke up and could see maybe mom and dad, or I'm wondering if maybe she was even incapacitated to the point to where she was laying down in the back, uh, but still alive. But I don't think that, I don't think she passed away in the house. I really don't. I think that the passing away came later at the campsite. And then if you look at the death card, we've got, if you just look at the geography and the landscape, we do have like a desert-like appearance in the background. We've got mountains, we've got dirt. I do think that he probably had a particular spot that he he dug unfortunately because we've got this dagger or the sword inside soil and then we've got this person here literally holding something like I don't know what you call those things but I, I, I kind of feel like it's a possibility that he did dig a hole to put her in unfortunately so there's that um, I, I do think that this is also him. If you can see that, this is the Four of Swords, usually the rest, meditation, contemplation. Makes me kind of wonder if, you know, I don't know. Let's just say hypothetically, if we take that timeline, if he was out there for four or five hours. I don't necessarily know if it took all that time to do what he did, and I'm wondering if he stayed out there just kind of making sure he, you know, covered all of his tracks and just, I, I, because I do feel like this is him still in that area. And another thing, again, let's look at, hold on, is that water? Let's look at this area. I don't think that's water. We've got a tree. I don't, I have never been out to Utah. It looks like a beautiful state, but I've never been out there. I have looked at images that I've, I've looked up and it seems like just vast desert to me and mountains off in the background. And I, I don't really know if there's trees like this necessarily in Utah. So you would have to let me know if anybody knows in, in the comment section, but I do kind of feel like he was next to some tree. Doesn't necessarily have to be a tree like this. So I don't know if there's pine trees out there or anything like that, but I do feel like he did at one point sit or possibly bury her near a tree. And he may have done that as a means of kind of knowing where to look if he did have to go back there maybe as a point to a point of reference or something like that. So now to go to the temperance card, since I've been using this deck, which I absolutely, absolutely love, this temperance card has given me a whole new meaning 
So in this particular deck, this has become my concoction card. This is a concoction card. I pulled this in the Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger uh, tarot reading. And when I seen it, I immediately thought to the drinks, the detox drinks that Nicole was making for Chris. And I felt like she was mixing something and possibly putting something in there because this is a woman who is it probably mixing water and wine and she's pouring it into her cauldron so to me this is a concoction and it can go either way it can be for good or it can be for dark because we we've got both light and shadow wings on this person typically this card represents balance but this has taken on a new meaning for me and it is absolutely okay for cards to take on personal meanings like that for you so this card has now become my concoction and this definitely seals the deal for me as far as him putting food in her or putting poison or some something in her food that night, possibly a drink. But he did give her something. This to me, just without a doubt. In fact, I, I thought to myself, you know, if that temperance card comes out, that concoction card comes out, without a doubt, I, I don't doubt that he you know, he gave her something to either make her sleep, knock her out, whatever, so that she wouldn't fight back, possibly. But he did give her something. So now I want to ask, I kind of want to go forward to the, the car rental. The car rental and him driving this rental car 400 miles away. So apparently he put 803, I think it was 803 miles on this rental car. So that's round trip. So we've got to cut that in half. So we've got about 400 miles that he put on this rental car. I want to ask really quick if it was at a point in time where he went back to get the remains of Susan so that he could move her. I think that he was a little bit nervous and I think that he was feeling that they were kind of getting suspicious of his behavior and we're possibly going to search that area and he definitely did not want them finding her and so he did go back to move her so first thing is the high priestess this high priestess is interesting because she's actually looking in a mirror she's got a hand mirror so she's looking at a reflection and honestly, I, I kind of feel like, and it, and it looks like it has like a gray look. I don't know if it's supposed to indicate that this is at night because we've got, it looks like a full moon. It looks like it's at night. I kind of feel like this really does to me say that there's a lot of things about this case that we really don't know. And we may possibly never know. There are some things that I think Josh took to the grave with him that day that he murdered his two boys and killed himself. So I do feel like there's a lot more things to this story that I think would shock most of us. But I do at the same time feel like this is confirming that he did go back there to move her remains. I think he felt like they were getting too close, that they were seeing him for who he truly, truly was and he could not risk them going out there and searching for her and finding her. So did Josh remove, I'm going to ask again for a confirmation or a clarifier. Did Josh remove Susan's remains that time that he rented the car? Did he remove Susan's remains the time he rented the car? Yeah, look at that. He moved her. He moved her. This is him taking her to a new place and walking away and leaving her there and abandoning her. I have no doubt about it. And we've got water. So we have water. Water has to play an important role here. This is a cups card, so this is water. And I take it as more literal water than I do feelings or emotions. And we've got some mountains back here. We've got some dry desert looking like mountains. We've got rocks, so he's stepping on rocks. It looks like we actually have like a little waterfall or a little stream over here. There's water coming down. So I don't know that area. 
I don't know if there's any kind of bodies of water or lakes or rivers or anything like that, but I do kind of feel like she is in an area where there are some rocks, mountains off in the distance, and there is water. And to me, this kind of shows that definitely without a doubt, this is him putting her somewhere and then walking out of there. So also I would say that this is definitely something or a location that you can't necessarily get to by car. You would have to park someplace and then get out and walk the rest of the way. So this isn't gonna be easily accessible. Hmm. All right, so was he alone? Now he's alone in this car, but I, I also wanna know if somebody else was there. So did Josh have any help from anyone in his family when he did this. Did Josh have help from anyone in his family? Did Josh have help from anyone in his family? Hmm, interesting, Queen of Cups. I, I honestly, I think this is Susan coming out and I think she's answering the question about the water. I really do. I think that it's a strong possibility that that she's either in water or near water. If I'm going by this card, I would guess in water. I wonder if... I, I would have to look at a map and see if there's any bodies of water in a 400 mile radius from, or a 400 mile distance from where Josh and Susan lived. Is there a big body of water there? I feel like this Queen of Cups is Susan, and she is literally sitting in a flower in water, and he is walking away from water. Did Josh have help with this? Did Josh have help with this? Did Josh have help with this? Wow. King of Wands. interesting that I'm asking about help and a man comes out. Any card could have came out, but a man came out. And an older man at that. So this tells me that it's possible that the father, Stephen, could have helped him. Wow, very interesting. Look at all that fire around him. Just tons of fire. To me, that just really indicates his, his mindset, Stephen's mindset. This man was not right at all. If you guys go out there, and I'm sure most of you have, if you've watched any of these videos that Stephen took of Susan, it was just creepy. He, he is a very creepy person. He wrote a song about Susan. It, it's the creepiest eeriest song you've ever heard in your life I think I'm gonna try to see if I can find a clip and insert it here but this this man is not right and um, I think he's where he needs to be right now I really do I think this fire all this fire around him is kind of showing where him and his sons are located and I think that they are definitely in a place that they need to be and if you look at these two cards because I do feel like this is Susan and I do feel like this is Susan's father-in-law he's in an area where he's surrounded by fire and heat and dark colors and look at Susan's she's surrounded by the blue sky trees flower she's sitting in a rose petal she's at peace if you just compare the two cards here that really makes me feel good that susan you know these people are passed over we know that but i feel like susan is in a completely different area than josh stephen and possibly michael nice okay so let me ask about michael what about michael is michael there as well is michael there as well Oh, wow, judgment. I kind of feel like this is definitely indicating that whether Michael was there or not, there is there is um, a karma that they are dealing with. Uh, they have their judgment day. They, I'm literally taking this as a literal judgment at this point. So 
I have no fear in my mind that the boys, Charlie and Brayden, are with their mother, and I have no doubt in my mind that Stephen, Michael, and Josh are probably in hell where they belong as well. Um, it, it, this is definitely their karma. On Judgment Day, there's some that go up and there's some that don't. So I, I really think that this is telling us that although there might not be justice in the physical plane, I do think that there is justice in the spiritual world. So that's good to know. All right, so right now I want to see if we can find out where Susan is now, if we can get any kind of clues on the geography, the landscape. Let's see what we can get. Where is Susan? Where is Susan? Where is Susan Cox Powell? Where is Susan Cox Powell? Hmm. All right, so let me move these up so you guys can see it here. All right, so just looking at this Two of Swords, honestly, it makes me feel like she's not sure where she's at. I don't think she knows. I don't think she expected this to happen. I think even though she made that video titled If something happens to me. I, I don't think really she was really expecting it and was really caught off guard. I don't think she really knows where she's at, to be honest with you. But we have another body of water. We have like a river behind her. And usually the Two of Swords is sitting on a bench and usually it's a huge body of water behind her. So this one here isn't as big. It's like kind of a stream or a little river of sorts. There are some rocks. It's surrounded by grass. It's got flowers down here. It's got the trees. And it, just the fact that this scene is taking place at night kind of makes me feel like maybe this was done under the cover of darkness maybe he didn't want to be seen. Uh, I do think that he took her someplace with his father's help, possibly with his brother's help, someplace 400 miles away and disposed of her remains out there. I don't think she knows where she's at, but there is definitely water. There's definitely water involved. I think he tried to be as fast as he could doing this. I think he knew that he was being watched by the police. He did disappear off the grid for 24 hours, so this tells me that he was definitely hauling ass to try to do what he did, not to rouse any suspicions because he was already gone for 24 hours, but look at here. We have three people. We have three people falling down, being attacked by this knight. So that tells me that, you know, we're possibly looking at Josh, Michael, Stephen. We've got three people. There's never any anyone else usually in the Knight of Swords. So the fact that three people are coming up in this card makes me wonder if three people weren't in that car with the exception of Susan's remains. But this is definitely speed. This is trying to get done. You know, I don't think he wanted to disappear too long because that would definitely be suspicious. It was still suspicious as it was, but I, I think he was trying to be as quickly quick as he could. And then we've got the whole aspect of the system, religion. Uh, it, yeah, it, not much to say about this one. I do think that they attended the Latter Day Saints. I don't know if that's how you say it or. I'm not sure if they were Mormons. I, I don't really have much information about about their religion. But I do know, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I do want to say that they were Mormons, but don't quote me on it. I do believe that that religion takes marriages very seriously. Very seriously. And the fact that this Two of Cups, the couple card came right here above the Hierophant tells me that that is representing the marriage. And I, I think that we are now possibly getting into a motive because if Susan was debating about leaving her husband or taking the boys or getting a divorce, that could have been an absolute taboo in their religion. I don't know. 
but I'm wondering if that was just absolutely not something that he was going to allow to happen. I believe I, I read someplace that Mormons believe that you are together once you get married, you are together for eternity in this world and in the next. And I don't think that they really look highly on divorce. So uh, it kind of makes me wonder if was Josh starting to have suspicions that Susan was considering to, to leave him and take the boys and that was just absolutely not going to happen. He would rather have her go missing or, or kill her than to have her divorce him. So I, I do think it, that it's a possibility that that is playing a factor, the religious belief, the religious background, his personal beliefs were playing a factor in this whole crime, this horrible situation. So we don't have, I, actually, when I look at this card, the Hierophant in this particular card, there's keys. There's always keys in the Hierophant, but I believe that this religion, this whatever it is, belief that they had, is the key to this case. That has a huge role in this case. So let's just keep that in mind. So we've got these three here. Um, we have the fool. When I look at this particular fool, I see a person with an air of arrogance. He's just got this nonchalant look on his face, nothing is phasing him, nothing is bothering him, he doesn't care. Uh, you know, he's got his little buddy there, but not only that, and I, and I do think that the expression on this person's face is definitely how, gosh, guys, I'm so sorry, I just don't feel like you can see these tonight. I do feel like the expression on his face does kind of show the ego that Josh has, because he, he does have a big ego. He's very he he he's definitely narcissistic there's no doubt about it he's very immature he's very controlling there's just something he, he just there he's not right right so we know that but let's go into the landscape and the background of this card so we have snow at least i think this is snow it might be clouds but we have snow and we have a bag so we have something that he is carrying right He's got a hand or a bowl of fire, and he's wearing boots. He's got a jacket on, but there's also this archway, this entranceway, and that makes me wonder if there is something like a cave or a mine or something that you would walk into, anything like that that is near water, that has mountains in the background. That's what I'm actually looking at right now. And I do feel like in this particular situation that that dog is representing someone that was assisting him that day. I, I do think that this is representing a helper because, so to speak, this dog is a helper, right? He's watching out for his buddy here. So I do feel like he did have somebody watching out for him. And I drew that King of Wands, and so I, I do feel like that was the dad. But let me go ahead and put this deck away. And then I want to go ahead and pull a few cards in. Let me see what time am I at. Okay. I want to pull a few cards in the after tarot. And again, I kind of want to focus on this 400 mile trip. That's what I want to focus on. I want to focus on who was with him during this 400 mile trip. And if we can get any kind of clues geographically, landscape-wise. And just kind of pay attention to what comes up in the cards like that. Ooh. Oh, okay. We've got water. We've got a big body of water again. All right. Where is Susan Cox? Where is Susan Cox? Where can Susan Cox's remains be found? Where can Susan Cox's remains be found? Give us some clues. Give us some clues in the landscape. Interesting that we've got the Knight of Swords coming up again. Queen of Swords, Knight of Swords. 
Nine of Pentacles. Wow, Five of Pentacles and the Chariot. All right, so I, I feel like this is just kind of telling the story. I do think that the the Nine of Pentacles is representing Susan. I think she was the breadwinner. She worked very hard. But I also look at the overall happiness of the person in this card because this does show happiness and contentment in somebody who has earned what they have and I do feel like this is her now present day she was a hard worker but she never really had an opportunity to enjoy what she earned because she was always forced to buy these toys and tools for her husband and so I do feel like that has changed now now I want to go into the knight of swords really quick because I feel like since this is a new deck we're kind of going back to the initial story the original story and I do feel like there was a tool. I, I really do feel like, and I hate saying that, but I do feel like there was a tool. I feel like this is her down here being attacked. And I feel like this is Josh up here on the horse. And so this kind of tells me that, you know, look at the shock on the horse. But this kind of tells me that she was literally knocked down. He did something to her. There is something that he used, I think, to harm her. So, yeah, that's awful. Jesus. Yeah, so uh, definitely. And I'm looking at this one here as this body of water. And look, we have three men. To me, this would be Josh, possibly Michael, possibly Stephen, or vice versa. But we've got three men. And we all know that fives are kind of chaotic in tarot so you have competition fighting trying to win at all cost and so this right here would show that this was not an easy task for them to do but they did get it done nonetheless and we've also got three swords we've got he's holding three swords there's two down here but he is holding three swords and so i i, I really do kind of feel like this is definitely saying that he had help with this situation now we've got again another five we've got the five of pentacles okay so i i, I do kind of feel like this is yeah i i kind of feel like when that night that he first went camping i think that susan was actually alive i think she was injured but she was alive and I say that she was injured because this card here depicts people that are injured. And so I, I do think that he, he, he did something. And this was actually on top of this card. It was laid out like this. So I feel like he did do something to her that, that injured her. I, and look at the anger. Look at the anger on this man's face. I don't know if you can see it here, but he has, he, he is absolutely furious. And the horse looks shocked, but his face, I've never seen a knight's face on a deck of cards look like this before. And he is just absolutely furious. I think he was absolutely furious when he attacked his wife. I think that he gave her something in those pancakes to knock her out. It possibly didn't work or it didn't work fast enough or it didn't work all the way or maybe it did work. But he did injure her. I don't think he killed her at the home. I think that there was enough injury to possibly cause blood, which would explain the carpet. But she was definitely injured. Okay, this is battered, not doing very well. I would even be not surprised if she went out there and this is awful. God, this I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't even have proper clothing for where they were going. I don't think he cared. I really don't. I think that he put the kids in the car or put her in the trunk first, put the kids in the car. Kids probably had jackets. He was probably all bundled up and nice and warm and then just threw Susan someplace with whatever she had on that night. I don't think he even took any care or consideration as to how she was covered up. I, I just, there's something about the lack of clothing or the lack of proper clothing that is concerning in this particular car. But we've got the chariot again. And so this to me does kind of definitely 
cinch it for me as far as Susan being in that car. I think that absolutely she was definitely in that car. He was absolutely lying when he said that he left her at home sleeping. No, she was in the car, the chariot. That is the car. That's the minivan. And she was actually inside of it. So definitely a lie. He did take her out there. I think she was injured in the back seat or in the trunk and, you know, ended up doing whatever he did while they were out there. We've got some water coming up, guys. So we've got water and then we have the queen of swords so we have a couple of swords we have the knight of swords we have the queen of swords let me ask another card as far as who is the queen of swords who is the queen of swords represent because i'm not quite convinced that it's susan who is the queen of swords who is the queen of swords represent let's clarify the queen of swords who is the queen of swords the king of wands the King of Wands. So, hmm, that's interesting. We've got two people, but we've got one of these people. Now, in the last pull with the Los Carabio deck, I pulled the King of Wands. That was the one with all the fire. And so immediately I thought, okay, that's Stephen. That's the father-in-law because kings and queens to me are more in that age range that would meet... Stephen, not so much as Susan or Josh. So I do feel like this is a male that's someone older. That Queen of Swords is someone that doesn't take any shit from someone. This is someone serious, very intellectual. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with law enforcement. I wonder if there was a, or possibly uh, maybe a parent I, I don't know anything about Susan's mother. This could actually be, I think in this case, I think in the last deck, yes. I think it's Susan's parents, to be honest with you. I think in the last deck, the King of Wands represented Stephen because of all that fire. And it just really kind of cinched it for me that he is in the place where he needs to be. But in this case, with this deck, I don't think it is Stephen. I, I do kind of feel like the Queen of Swords is perhaps... Susan's mother and the king of wands is Susan's father and I think his name is Chuck I'm not sure about our mother's name but this I think is is coming out because the parents have fought so hard to keep their daughter's name in the media you know they had so much shit that they had to deal with with Stephen and Josh and they've lost their daughter they've lost their grandkids I think that you know the father I honestly feel like the father, the king of wands, to me, he is struggling more emotionally than the mother. The mother is struggling, but she is more, I, I think that there is more anger on her side. I think him, it's more sadness and hurt. She's more angry. That's kind of how I, I feel about it. She's trying to cope with it. But it, it, I can't even imagine. So I, 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 interesting that they came out. I do think that that is Susan's parents. So let me see here. I want to ask if there's ever going to be justice in this case, if Susan's remains are ever going to be found. Is Susan's remains ever going to be found? Is there going to be justice in this case? Justice on the physical plane. Oh my God, we've got the Hierophant again. Oh my God, guys, I am going to stop now. Let me pull these cards out of the way so you can see what I'm freaking out about. And we have the Justice card, literally the Justice card. Oh man, interesting. So we've got the Page of Swords. And again, my question was, is there ever, is there ever going to be any kind of justice in this case? The very last card I pulled was in fact the justice card. So I do feel like there is eventually going to be some sort of ending in, in this case, possibly. I don't, 
when I look at this page of swords, this is someone, you know, a younger person, a younger action, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of wonder if this case needs some fresh eyes. Someone knew a different possible uh, group of investigators, detectives, cold case people, something like that. I, I think that something new has to come in because this is fresh. This is something new. This is young, younger person, younger idea, just starting out. Okay. It has to be someone different. I think that it would have to have a different look at it with someone from the outside. And I think that that would actually help. I, I honestly, I feel like they have all the, the, the pieces of the puzzle. They have everything that they need. I think that this Hierophant coming out is interesting because we've got the two keys again. So I do think that religion is playing a key factor, a key role in his motive. I really do. He was not about to let his wife leave him. His ego couldn't handle that. He'd rather kill her than to have her leave him and take the boys. I just don't think he could handle that. And part of that may have been his extreme religious views, possibly. I do believe with those keys, though, that religion played a key role in the motive. So as far as the case being solved, though, this is, it's the magician, right? It's having all the tools to manifest the outcome or the desires that you're wishing for. So this tells me that they have all the pieces. They have all the pieces of the puzzle. They're just not putting them together, right? Which makes me kind of feel like somebody new has to come in or a different person, a different set of eyes. I don't know, new, I don't know. But they have the pieces of the puzzle. They, they could put it together if they wanted to. I don't know if it's a lack of money. I mean, granted, I know that you're talking about a 400 span of miles out in the middle of the Utah desert and it would be impossible to look for something and you don't even know where to begin. But they have the tools to achieve that. They have the tools to solve this case, I really do believe. This here concerns me because it makes me feel like it's possible that they have maybe abandoned this case a little bit. Um, I don't like that this card came out. So this is, you know, this is literally leaving. And I, that kind of concerns me. Are they even looking anymore? Um, I, I'm wondering if that's why mom and dad of Susan came out because I think that I would assume that they're still fighting to keep her name out there and, and keep this case alive. But I kind of feel as this, I, I feel as if this case has been abandoned by the police. I really do. Um, but again, let me just quickly switch and look at the landscape again. So we do have mountains. It's ironic that these cards have all these rocky type mountains that you see in Utah. It's absolutely perfect to compare the landscape, but we do have water and water has been a reoccurring theme in this reading tonight. So I do believe that I do believe that Susan was moved from the original campsite to someplace 400 miles away. We don't even know in which direction, but some someplace 400 miles away. And I do think that she is absolutely near water. Definitely water, definitely mountains, rocks. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I said in the beginning, in the intro, I said that Charlie, the oldest son, made a comment or a reference to crystals. And there are crystals, there's different types of gemstones in Utah. And so since he did say that, uh, and these, you know, things are coming out, I, I wonder, then again, that would probably be the original location so that would probably be the original location. But even if they found evidence that there was, in fact, a, a crime scene in that area would prove that without a doubt he did kill his wife, which I don't think most of us need that evidence to feel or to know for a fact that he did kill his wife, but it would be a start. So um, I wonder if they, you know, are taking the crystal statement in the beach, but he also mentioned a beach. He mentioned the crystals and a beach. And look at this. Doesn't this look like a beach area? 
again, we're talking about what Charlie said, so that would have we're talking about that first initial campsite. So I don't think that she's in that location anywhere or anymore, but I do think that where she at, where she is at is near water, definitely water. And then we have the justice. So interesting. I know I was going to end on that, but I do want to ask one more question. I want to ask, let me move these over here. I want to ask if Susan's remains are ever going to be found. Susan's remains ever going to be found. Susan's remains ever going to be found. Well, they could definitely be found, but it would take a lot of work. A lot of work. But you know what, with that magician, they have the ability, they have the tools necessary. They have the tools necessary. I'm concerned about them abandoning the case though, I really am. But this tells me that they have, they have leads and they have information, they have evidence, I don't know what that is, but they, they have information to where they could probably get a starting point as far as to where to look for her. I think it could be done. I really do. And the fact that this is coming out, really the work card, and the fact that this justice card came out, that tells me that it is a possibility that they could potentially find her remains. And at least that could possibly give some sort of solace to the parents, maybe, so that they could at least know where their daughter's remains are and you know possibly put the daughter place the daughter with her sons really another quick question I want to know if it's going to be law enforcement I do think that her her remains will be found I really do and so I'm going to just go on and ask if her remains are going to be found by law enforcement or by just people randomly coming across them like what happens so often in cases like this interesting interesting so we've got the two of cups well, maybe a couple maybe a couple out walking hiking something like that Oh, wow, look at that. Wow, how interesting. I have never seen a four of pentacles with the grim reaper next to him. Wow, very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, interesting on that one. Hmm. got a city in the background we can assume that this person has turned his or her back when sometimes with the four of pentacles I always look at the guy who's hoarding his coins and his back is facing the city and so sometimes I look at that as you know somebody who has possibly turned their back on spending you think of city, you think of town, stores, restaurants, things like that. And so this person, for whatever reason, they're hoarding their funds or their money. They are reducing their spending. They're not going out to eat. They're not shopping or anything like that. They're just tightly holding on to their money. Um, but in this particular case, I feel like the city is behind him. And so there's a reason why that is coming out. I wonder if... I don't think he would be so brazen as to put the remains or put Susan in an area that would be that close to a city. I, I really don't. But you never know. And it kind of makes me feel like, I, I do feel like her, her remains are going to be found. I really do. I really do. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Anytime soon at all. But I, I, yeah, very interesting on this one. Hmm. Let me know what you guys think about this Four of Pentacles. 
So guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. I know I wanted to end it on the justice card. That one to me felt like a good one to end it on, but I was just curious about those couple other questions. And so um, definitely I think that she is near water, near a body of water, a fairly large body of water, possibly rocks are around it, definitely the mountains in the background. Um, I do think that she is within a 400 mile range from the Powell's home, which is a huge area, okay? We can't even deny that, a huge area that encompasses so much space. But I do believe that he actually harmed her at home. I think that he did poison her with those pancakes or gave her something. He harmed her at home. And then I think he transported her with the boys in the van to that initial campsite. And then eventually, once he felt that they were kind of looking at him as a suspect, possibly, he was scared that they would find her, and so he did go back. I think he had help. I think his brother and at least his father, at least his father, someone was helping him. And I think that he drove 400 miles away and disposed of her remains and came back. And, it, you know, it just, it, it's not, I, it, it's, I kind of feel like at this point, because of the fact that he is no longer here, I kind of feel like possibly the law enforcement have kind of turned their backs on this case and abandon it and aren't really, I don't know if they're really actively looking for her, probably not because it's been so many years, but I do feel like they have all the components to figure out where she could possibly be and narrow it down. You can't tell me that they don't have some sort of advanced technology to try to narrow down something. I don't know. You'd think that they would be able to come up with something nowadays, but I think that they do have the tools. And I think that also the religion, the religion was a, a key factor in motive. So let me end it there, guys. Again, I think I'll come on here in a couple of days and I will do a random drawing for the tarot candle um, and the wax melt. And so until next weekend, have a great week and I will see you then.